Lori, let's do it. Do what? Let's review the Total Recall soundtrack on vinyl. Honey, why do you have to spoil a perfectly wonderful morning? Welcome to Popcorn and Vinyl, the show dedicated to films, film score, and vinyl. Today we are chatting Total Recall, a film now over three decades old, one of the greatest science fiction films of all time, and one of Arnie's best. And I would actually place this in my top three favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. The film is based on a short story called We Can Remember It For You Wholesale, written by Philip K. Dick. A science fiction author also known for stories such as Minority Report and Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, which was later adapted into Blade Runner. So obviously a lot of really great science fiction material to work from. Total Recall is directed by Paul Verhoeven, whose Hollywood resume includes such hits such as Basic Instinct, Robocop, Starship Troopers, Showgirls, Hollow Man, and many others. His work has never shied away from expertly crafted, yet perhaps a bit uh, excessive violence, raw sexuality, and exploring Western consumerism through satire. The Dutch filmmaker certainly has a bold style and does have a pretty unique look within the Hollywood system. Total Recall to this day remains an absolute masterpiece, visually stunning, with many of the special effects still holding up today, a brilliant story, endlessly quotable, and featuring an ending that still has us wondering, was it all a dream? Providing the musical score to this iconic film is none other than Jerry Goldsmith, who also has an extensive resume with Hollywood blockbusters and has done the score to some of the greatest science fiction films of all time. Jerry Goldsmith describes it as an avant-garde score with a mixture of classical orchestral music blended beautifully with exuberant and at times ethereal synthesizers. The score manages to stand out from the relentless bullets, glass shattering, Arnold grunts and really provides a riveting score to this action-packed film. It is detailed, complex, and very layered. The intense music really guides our emotional journey as there is a constant sense of danger and questioning throughout the film. The soundtrack to this film is perfect and I would not change a thing. Many motifs present in this film can actually be seen again in some later Star Trek films, such as Star Trek Insurrection, where uh, there's, well, there's the mountain track from Total Recall. You could hear a lot of that in uh, the scene where Data discovers the holodeck ship. I think it will be wiser. I'm going with you. Science fiction is a very comfortable place for Goldsmith, and he continuously is able to balance you know, relentless action with awe and these fantastic mystical elements. The film opens with this very strong, brassy, and percussive sort of element to it that really gets you into the kind of the, the kinetic nature of the film right off the bat. Now this opening may sound familiar to Arnold fans as it is very reminiscent of the Conan the Barbarian theme song as well. Uh, and that makes sense because this film was edited with a temp track using that Conan the Barbarian music. So uh, it very naturally kind of fits the opening and you could see Goldsmith taking some inspirations from that temp music. After that opening scene, we get a bit uh, of an emotional break as we're just kind of discovering, you know, life in the future here. Uh, but once we get to the implant, it's sort of off to the races in terms of that kinetic action. It's just rampant and constant. You're constantly just feeling a sense of tension and we're just along for the ride with Quaid. It's amazing how the music is so intense and expressive, but it doesn't necessarily 
draw attention to itself away from the film. You're still, I find, very immersed in the film, but the music in the mix, it is very loud. It's very pronounced, but I don't think most people would really notice that necessarily. So I think that it is, it is utilized very effectively in the film. A fun fact about the recording of the score, it was actually originally done in Munich, and that was meant to basically save on budget. The orchestra there, however, wasn't familiar with Goldsmith's style and essentially couldn't keep up. After some initial unsuccessful recordings, they ended up going back to London to record with the National Philharmonic there, which was much more used to Goldsmith's style, and thus we get the performance that we get in this film. Not only does Goldsmith provide the music, the score, uh, but he also does the in-world, uh, you know, diegetic music that takes place within the film. So things like the jingles, like, you know, for the memory of a lifetime, recall, recall, recall. You know, stuff like that. It must have been just a such a fun sandbox for Jerry Goldsmith to play in where he probably doesn't get the chance to do some of that stuff on a regular basis. So with a soundtrack this good, it must have given soundtrack enthusiasts some great music to listen to for the last three decades, right? The initial release of the soundtrack clocked in at just over 40 minutes, meaning that fans have been deprived of some key musical cues for a very long time. But over the years, some better releases have given us more of that sweet, sweet Goldsmith. Thus, for the 30th anniversary release, Quartet Records gave us a glorious 3LP release. And I say glorious because this is my favorite record pressing of last year. Pressed onto 180 gram vinyl and limited to 1,000 copies, this release was specifically mastered for vinyl from the original digital multi-track master tapes. Mastered by Bruce Botnick with the lacquers mastered by Bernie Grundman. Total Recall was on my vinyl wish list for a very long time and Quartet delivered way beyond my expectations. Now this LP release was based on the 25th anniversary CD release that they released five years earlier, with those previously unreleased tracks finally being made available to listeners. One interesting thing that Quartet did is, in this three LP release, the first two LPs are the expanded score, and then the, the third LP is the original score as presented with that original release. And I like this approach because it kind of suits my different listening needs. There are times where I just wanna to listen to the score, it's an entirety, but other times I like, again, just little glimpses of the music. And because I've been listening to that original soundtrack for so long, I'm kind of used to hearing certain tracks in a certain order. So hearing that original LP uh, as that original soundtrack was released is just kind of a comfortable way of listening to the soundtrack. As much as I love the additional music, there are times where I just want to hear a pared down version. There's also a part of me that's just used to hearing the tracks in a certain way, and I just like to experience listening to it the way I have for the last 30 years. But majority of the time, I'm going to be going for that expanded material. One thing that Quartet did not do was release some of those source tracks like the Total Recall jingle or alternate takes uh, as available on that CD release. And I could see some people desiring that, but I suspect that would be sort of the least listened to part of this kind of package for everybody and be, it'd be a little bit of a waste, you know, if they did a fourth LP. I don't think that would be necessary and we could kind of get by without it. So if you really want to hear those source tracks, they are available on CD or on Spotify, so they're always there. But what you're, all, you're already getting in this package is is so great. The 25th anniversary is worth listening to, you know, even on Spotify or whatever streaming service, because you know you can listen to those rejected cues. It's kind of cool just to kind of see what the difference is in that same material recorded by two different orchestras. Standout tracks for me include The Mountain, The Spaceport, The Mutant, The Reactor, especially with that full expression of the main theme uh, as the hologram device is being exchanged. That's just one of my favorite parts uh, of the film. It, it's very clever and, and just really fun. I'm going to end by discussing my favorite part, the artwork. This is so beautifully handled. I honestly wish every soundtrack on my desire list could be handled in, in a similar fashion. So, you know, with the opening front cover, uh, it's very simple artwork, very similar to some key art that came out with the original film. It's a nice, subtle piece of art that really kind of 
throws you back to some of the original promotional material. It has a gorgeous triple gatefold with an, a cool image of Mars and a spectacular booklet uh, on the inside. And, and the front cover of this booklet, this could be, uh, this could have easily been the cover of the album. I think some people might have preferred that. I just think this is such a striking image. Again, if, if every album cover could kind of come in this style, um, that would be my, my dream. I love that sort of that 80s painterly sort of style. I think that's phenomenal, incorporates all the elements of the film so well. I often talk about certain covers being kind of frameable pieces of art, but but I legitimately might frame and, and hang this piece because this is, it is so well done. It's pressed onto simple black vinyl with nice little label designs in the center. To me, this release is a master class in, in a record treatment. No gimmicks, just incredible artwork and fantastic music. This was my first purchase from Quartet Records and hopefully will not be my last. I would love to see more from this label. Uh, another Goldsmith score I would love to see in this kind of treatment would be the Mummy soundtrack. I would love for someone to make that one happen. Uh, and this kind of treatment I think would be perfect for that movie. So uh, I'm sure there's an anniversary coming up that you guys can do that for. Wink, wink. Overall, I would consider this one of the best soundtrack releases in my entire collection. I think this is really worth trying to seek out. It might be expensive in the aftermarket, but I think for any Goldsmith fan, this is definitely worth checking out. Either way, I would do whatever you could to try and get your hands on, and this, I highly, highly recommend it. That's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time.